Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wine with Jimmy channel. I am your host, Jimmy Smith. Thank you for stopping by. This is a wine educational channel which is designed to really help those of you studying the world of wine to get more from it. And welcome to a series here for the diploma of the WSET. That's the level four. We're focusing on sparkling, that's the D4 section. And we're looking here at England and Wales, the mighty old blighty. And we're going to go through the rolling green hills of my fair country. There is Chapel Down, their vineyards located in Kent, the Garden of England. So we are talking on this section about the climate, what makes it possible for viticulture, the marginal kind of look at this climate, and of course the difficulties associated to it. Uh, if you do have any comments, please do get in touch. You can comment on this video below. Uh, if you have anything to say about the wines of England, if you have anything to say about the climate, of course, they always say that if you put two Englishmen together, they're going to end up talking about the weather. So we always have lots to talk about in terms of this. Maybe you can chime in for your area as well if you are based in the UK. So yes, please do get in touch. Make sure you click like and subscribe as well. So let's talk about the climate of my fair country. So we're going to begin by understanding its latitude, then a major factor that impacts the climate here. So English vineyards, England and Wales are situated really in what we call the northern frontier for vine growing, um, kind of the cusp of grape growing it's been mentioned as before. Uh, and remember, old books of champagne would say they were the most northerly limit for viticulture. Of course, we know that to be different now with the likes of Scandinavia, Denmark, Germany and England and Wales, of course, as well. So uh, we are talking about a very northerly latitude uh, and we are looking above 50 degree north. So we have this very high latitude. Now, these high latitudes mean that commercial viable viticulture is only possible because there is a moderating effect that happens to the islands of Britain, which you see from these red arrows here. Uh, so you'll see that we have an origin here of the Gulf Stream, which uh, originates from the tropics, uh, the Gulf of Mexico, uh, and so on, moving its way across the Atlantic. We call this the Gulf Stream, and then it affects parts of a little bit of Spain, but a lot of the west coast of France and then England. And it does shift its latitudinal position. So it can be across places like France more commonly than Britain and vice versa. Uh, so what does this do? Well, Britain, England, Wales are in a northerly latitude, which typically would be quite cold. But warm weather is what is brought across from the tropics along with a lot of rainfall, because, of course, it is across the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, so we have a more moderating effect. We have in instances here in, in Britain, we have quite mild winters and then we have kind of like warm summers. It's a very gentle climate with a less diurnal range than you'd find with most European vineyards, very typically. Um, but we do have some other things to mention. Yes, we have the moderating effect, but because we are a very northerly latitude in the growing season, we do have very long daylight hours because of the degree of tilt to the earth during the summer months around the solstice of June into July. Um, we do typically on a full sunshine day have up to around 16, even 16 and a half hours of sunlight in places like England and Wales. Uh, so that's exceptional in terms of the possibility. But of course, that often is shrouded in cloud. And that can, of course, diminish the ability of photosynthesis. Uh, um, now, we know also it's a cold climate. So moderating effect from the Gulf Stream, high latitude, long daylight hours during the summer months. And then we have also the cold climate that we find here. Uh, and that's where we get, of course, 
really high acidities uh, from the wines in England and Wales. This gives us really a good combination as a base wine for traditional method sparkling wine. Cold climate, high acidity with just enough ripening of the grapes, which is what we find really in Champagne, for example, as well. Where do we find most of our vineyards? So today, vineyards, because of the expansion, are found all over. So the southwest you may have heard of Camel Valley, for example, um, kind of Gloucestershire, Herefordshire. You may have heard of uh, Three Choirs um, up into the Chilterns and uh, up and beyond Oxford area and even in places like Yorkshire and Lincolnshire. But in fact, the focal point today uh, and around 85 percent of the vineyards are in southern England, specifically in Kent, which is the Garden of England located to the southeast of London, Surrey, which is quite a major part of London, the southwest of London down here, and then the Sussexes, West and East Sussex. Of course, you may know some famous places down here like Brighton, for instance, and Plumpton College, which is the UK's viticultural college. Uh, Hampshire, located here as well. So this uh, is above of the Isle of Wight, uh, and where Hambledon, remembering back to the historical session on the previous one, uh, Hambledon is located here. You also find the New Forest, for example. Uh, so most of our vineyards are in this area, in these counties, which lie to the southeast, south and southwest of London, for example. An increasing amount in Essex and East Anglia, that's Norfolk and Suffolk as well. Um, now, really, these areas uh, have a cold maritime climate. Rainfall occurs across the United Kingdom throughout the year, very typically. Um, the more you are in the impact of the Gulf Stream, which of course is the west of the country, uh, places like Cornwall, Dorset, Devon, Wales, are going to have much more elevated rainfall. Uh, around these home counties here that we have south of London, um, a moderate rainfall and in fact the driest parts are places like Essex and East Anglia which sit towards really the farthest point away from uh, the effect of the Gulf Stream so they're very dry parts of the country. So of course one always draws a comparison to Champagne. It happens, it's just going to naturally happen certainly when you put something French against something English. It's very typical in history. So let's go through some advantages of the climates that we find here and some disadvantages that we uh, find here. First of all, um, southern England is around 1.5% cooler than Champagne. Okay, so southern England around 1.5% at uh, one, one, sorry, 1.5 degrees Celsius cooler in the really key key months for the must, certainly in August, for example. So uh, in the real height of summer. Um, so you would therefore understand that that disadvantage there, of course, we would not be able to produce as much sugar, therefore for ripeness. But actually in September, it's typically about one degree Celsius warmer. So going in towards really, it, it, September is kind of like West France says August makes the must. It's a famous phrase. In somewhere like England, September makes the must. And in fact, we have 1% warmer, uh, sorry, 1 degree Celsius warmer in September than Champagne. Now, uh, Champagne has colder winters, so it's more bitterly cold, that could be a problem for younger vines, and it has more days of frost, uh, which is crazy uh, if you if you think about it 60 to 80 potential days of frost uh, and in somewhere like Sussex which is south of London remember towards Brighton around 30 to 50 uh, which is interesting um, now a disadvantage for England so the fact is that England is a bit safer for frost England, though, has slightly more rainfall, but this is absolutely dependent on where you are in England. It may surprise some of you that the rainfall of, say, Surrey 
or Sussex is actually less than Bordeaux um, and and a little bit less than somewhere like Burgundy, for example. Growing season. Now, um, England has uh, one week earlier budding, one week later flowering and a longer growing season uh, with picking roughly around two to three weeks after champagne. So you would say that the disadvantage there is that one week earlier budding means the potential of more frost damage, although more limited, can happen. And also then your flowering, which is in a later time. So you've basically got a, a bit of a, a problematic longer period for frost. But longer growing seasons, you're able to pick later into the year. And then due to the higher latitude, we've mentioned this already, there is greater daylight in a good year greater phenolic ripeness capability, but also greater unevenness of flowering and ripeness from one year to another. Um, but normally, English producers can fairly consistently pick at around 9 to 11% potential alcohol. And that is increasing. We are not only with climate change, but also knowledge, understanding the vineyard. We're getting more and more from it. OK, so um, the average growing season in terms of temperature has risen from 13 degrees Celsius. Uh, that's 55 degree Fahrenheit in the middle of last century uh, towards 14 degrees Celsius. That's 57 degree Fahrenheit. Um, so it's still cold, but it is less marginal. Cold temperatures result, of course, in slower ripening slower sugar accumulation and the pres preservation of acidity and the creation of medium intensity flavor characteristics. Climate change, of course, just mentioned is happening. England may well be set to be one of the most few beneficiaries of rising global temperatures of course in many places which are uh, historically warm are becoming hot and that's very prob problematic but England in fact has been brought out of its marginal climate into a more stable climate so this should enable much more reliable ripening as well as an increased variety of grape varieties cultivars and clones that are able to thrive here. Some reports predict by 2040, England will have become an intermediate climate wine region. But with that climate change doesn't all come beautiful, wonderful uh, key advantages. We do have uh, some unpredictable volatility that comes with it as well. So the impact of global warming means that we have less easy to predict seasons. Regions are already seeing a greater number of extreme weather events like heavy rain accompanying the more reliable ripening. Two factors have increased the risk of frost as well. Earlier budding due to warmer springs. That is a huge problem for, of course, early budding varieties. Uh, that is Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, which, of course, are the varieties that are significantly being focused on, uh, in contrast to the much more hardier German varieties. Weather patterns could well become damagingly volatile in the future, and the real doomsday prediction of the Gulf Stream moving or disappearing would be hugely catastrophic for this region, as well as many others. Um, the biggest threat to yields is really the prolonged rainfall, and that's because of this maritime climate. The rain and cool temperatures in June, July can af affect things like flowering and fruit sets, which can drastically reduce yields. I will actually go through in the next video um, the real big impact of this in terms of numbers of yields, looking at some of the key areas in England and Wales and then giving you some um, of the averages of yields in those areas. Uh, quite classic. So to take an extreme example, 2012 had the wettest June for 100 years. 
Some top estates did not pick fruit in this year at all, and generally yields were down because of the mildew and rot damage. Now, in addition, rain during the harvest month of October can be a threat to quality. So managing the vineyard is very key. That's with timely spraying against fungal disease. Uh, and that's also managing the financial risks of fluctuations of yields. Uh, very important priorities here. Thankfully, though, with the wonderful Institute at Plumpton College for the Faculty of Viticulture and Winemaking, we find that we now have the greatest amount of knowledge that we ever have done in terms of managing the vineyard. So we are getting more from the vines, um, even in some adverse conditions. OK, so that brings me to the conclusion of the climate section. Please do join me for site selection and yields. If you do have any questions, any comments, please do get in touch. Remember, I could go into much more detail, but this is, of course, more in line with the diploma WSET level four that you need. Uh, so thank you very much for your time. If you do find yourself in the UK and you want to come experience some of these wonderful wines across the home counties and beyond, please do get in touch. Come and see me for a class, maybe on English wines, a glass of English wine or potentially a bottle, which is more likely. I've been Jimmy. Ciao for now. Bye bye.